Jesus Christ is the foundation of the Christian faith. And therefore, for us as believers, is the most important person in all of human history. And as his followers, we want to learn as much about him as possible. And for that, we turn to the Bible. What is also referred to at times as the Word of God or the Holy Scriptures. And as Christians, we recognize the Bible as the authority of our faith and practices. The Bible is pretty well divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is pretty well the first two-thirds of the Bible and contains 39 books, primarily written in Hebrew, though there are some portions, small portions of it, written in a kind of a sister language to Hebrew known as Aramaic. The Old Testament reveals to us important aspects of God's character and his interactions with us as individuals and families and nations over time. Included in these books are revelations of God's justice and judgments, as well as his wisdom and power and his mercy and faithfulness. In particular, the Old Testament emphasizes God's faithfulness to keep his covenants, his promises, whether with individuals or families or nations. Within the Old Testament, you quickly see God's special love and purpose for the nation of Israel, as shown in his most special promise to send them a deliverer, a God-given mission to see mankind redeemed from all of their rebellion and selfishness as they had turned away from God and towards their own selfish desires. The Hebrew title for this deliverer was Messiah, which literally means anointed one. Now, in the New Testament, that's the last third, essentially, of the Bible, containing 27 books, records the outworking of this promise in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. We see this in the title that was given him, derived from the Greek word Christos, which we now use and say as Christ, which again literally means anointed one. Jesus came to Israel as the anointed one whom God had sent to fulfill God's promise. Jesus fulfilled everything the Old Testament had foretold about his coming. Viewed from this perspective, the Old Testament and the New Testament form a single harmonious revelation of God and his purposes for all people. Listen to what Jesus Christ said concerning himself and the Holy Scriptures when he was once accused uh, by the religious leaders of that day for blasphemy. This is what took place. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, At my Father's direction I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? They replied, We're not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus replied, It is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are God's. And you know that the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called God's, why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the Son of God? After all, the Father set me apart and sent me into the world. Here we see Jesus making the distinction that the Holy Scriptures, which in other translations of this exact same portion of Scripture also refers to as the Word of God, did not originate with people but with God himself. Though many men were used in various ways to make the Bible available to the world, they were merely instruments. In no case did the message or revelation of the Bible originate with men, but always and only with God himself. But there's another factor to consider, which is found in the word scripture itself, which literally means that which is written. The Bible does not contain the entire knowledge or purpose of the Almighty in every aspect or detail. That's why the Bible records that God's ways remain mysterious in so many ways. Nor does the Bible contain all of the divinely inspired messages that God has ever given through human instruments. This is proven by the fact that the Bible itself makes mention in many places of utterances of prophets whose words are not recorded in the Bible. From this we know that the Bible, though completely true and authoritative, is also highly selective. 
and is written in a way so that its message, which of course is intended for you and me, is expressed in words and ways that we can understand. Its central theme and purpose is for the spiritual welfare of people everywhere, from every nationality and from every race. It reveals to us the nature and consequences of sin while showing us the way to be delivered from sin and its consequences through faith in Christ Jesus. In John chapter 10, verse 35, which we just read a moment ago, Jesus wasn't just giving us his personal approval of Scripture, but also gives us an important understanding that the Scriptures cannot be altered. Again, this shows us not just the nature of Scripture, but the nature of God himself, a little snapshot of his character. Because within this short phrase is contained every claim concerning the Bible and its supreme and divine authority, which is to say this, once God says it, it will happen. The Bible itself indicates very plainly that there is one supreme and invisible influence by which God did in fact control and direct and communicate with the spirits and minds of the men who would be used to write the Bible. This invisible influence is the Holy Spirit, God's own spirit. For example, the Apostle Paul says it like this in 2 Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. The word inspired that is used here is literally translated inbreathed of God or born of God. In 2 Peter, it says it like this, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. The Greek word used here that's translated as moved by is perhaps more accurately understood as this, directed in their course by the Holy Spirit. In both these portions of Scripture, we are drawn to this understanding that the complete accuracy of the divine message of the Bible is due to the perfect operation of the Holy Spirit, overruling all of the frailty and shortcomings of the human vessel actually used to pen the words. We see this acknowledged through all of Scripture in both the Old and New Testament. In fact, in the Old Testament, in the writings of King David, in Psalms, it says this, your eternal word, O Lord, stands in the heaven. In Matthew, in the New Testament, the words of Jesus are recorded as saying, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. And again, earlier in Matthew, we read Jesus saying to a crowd that was questioning and challenging him concerning things recorded in the Old Testament, to which Jesus replied, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of of God. Not only did Jesus accept the absolute authority of the Old Testament scripture in all of his teachings, he also acknowledged their absolute authority and control over the whole course of his earthly life. We see this in a phrase said of him over and over again in the Gospels in this, that it might be fulfilled. What were they saying? That the things that Jesus was engaged in the things that Jesus was paying attention to, the things that Jesus was living out in his life was done so that it might be fulfilled, that the Old Testament scriptures, that the prophecies of old might be fulfilled through his life. Again, once God says it, it will happen. For example, the Bible specifically records that each of the following incidents, those that were first recorded in the Old Testament, took place through the life of Jesus so that the Old Testament might be fulfilled. And they are these. His virgin birth, his birth in Bethlehem, his flight to Egypt, his living in Nazareth, his anointing by the Holy Spirit, his ministry in Galilee, his healing of the sick, the fact that he would be rejected in his teachings and his miracles would be rejected by the Jews of the day. His use of parables was mentioned in the Old Testament. His betrayal by a friend, his being forsaken 
by his disciples, his being hated without a cause, his being condemned with criminals, his garments being divided and gambled for, him being offered vinegar or sour wine for his thirst upon the cross, his body being pierced without his bones being broken, and his rising from the dead on the third day were all foretold, all prophesied hundreds if not thousands of years earlier in the Old Testament writings. And there is one more prophecy yet to be fulfilled, that one day he would return again for his own. The entire life of Jesus here upon the earth was directed in every aspect by the absolute authority of Scripture. And we are his followers. We're supposed to live our lives the way he lived his life, which begs the question, how is your life being directed?